Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Ask the Editor. We're going to be talking about audio tools again, but we're gonna look at Final Cut 10 today. So you have your video all set and you're ready to start digging into the audio. So a couple of these effects are gonna really help clean up any little trouble spots. Again, it's not going to repair any damaged audio. You're really gonna to wanna to look into using Logic or Audition to do any sort of repair work. But if you're looking to just sweeten some things, fine tune, this stuff will really help you out. So a couple of things you wanna keep note of if you're going to be using any of these effects is some track management and utilizing audio rolls. If a video clip has multiple audio sources, then you can set the audio source that is gonna be what you were working with right from the beginning. And you just do that here in the audio inspection. So if you look right here, you'll notice that we have camera audio for four cameras, and then we have two high quality source audios. So from here, you can decide which of the source audios you wanna keep, and then we can ignore this camera audio so it's not gonna get in our way. Once we set the audio here, it'll be set throughout the project, so just make sure you're pulling all of your correct sources. Another trick that's gonna make your audio workflow a little bit easier to manage is assign roles to your different audio types. So if you look here on the timeline, we have a couple different colors that correspond with our different audio roles. So this light blue is gonna be our sound effect. The green is all of our music. The orange is our source, and then this blue is dialogue, so any natural audio we're using. So if you look at them all here, they're kind of all over the place, and if we wanted to apply an effect to all of our source audio or all of our dialogue, we'd have to go in and do it on one clip and then copy and paste it across all of them. So to make that a little bit easier, what we can do is come over here to Index and make sure that you're on the Roles tab, and you're gonna hit Show Audio Lanes. So what that's gonna do is group all of our audio rolls together so they're kind of in one space. If you wanted to apply effect to all of a particular audio type, you would just highlight all of it and then create a compound clip. So now all of those clips are in one area, so if you wanted to apply effect across all of those clips, you can do it just now on this compound clip. This will come in handy too if you're going to send it off to a different program like Logic or Audition. So we'll just go ahead and organize all of them. Now that we have our timeline organized so that we can easily manipulate everything that we need, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have your audio meters actually pulled up so you can register any audio that's too low or that might be peaking out of range. So they're right here um, underneath the viewer. You'll notice if you hit play, you can kind of see them start moving, but we're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're actually viewable so that we can make sure that we're, we're leveling out our audio effectively. So if you just click on those bars, they'll pop up here to the right. And now as we play back, we can see exactly what levels uh, we're working with. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you listen with headphones so that you can pick up on some of those finer details in order to really get that audio dialed in. When it's all said and done though, you're gonna to wanna to play it back on the viewing platform that you think your couple or your client will use. So if you imagine this will be viewed on a cell phone, go ahead and view it on your smartphone. If you imagine this will be viewed on a computer, view it on your laptop, just so you can get an idea of what your viewer is hearing and then you can adjust accordingly. The first thing we're gonna start with is channel EQ. Now, if your audio from your recording device feels a little harsh or maybe hollow, this effect will really help you balance out the different frequencies. Every audio element has an EQ built in in Final Cut. So if you click on your audio and come up here to the inspector, under audio enhancements, you'll see equalization. If you click on that and come to the drop-down menu on the right, you can actually utilize some of the presets. These presets will work really well if you have your audio fairly dialed in just from the source. The algorithms can usually pick up on different things and really help you even out your audio without having to dig too much into it. If you're wanting to look for a little bit more customization though, you're gonna wanna use the channel EQ effect that you can get in the effects window. So we get the effects browser in the, with these two little boxes and we're just gonna search for channel EQ right here under audio effects and pull that directly onto the audio clip you wanna work with. Come up here to the audio inspector, make sure it's checked on, and this little control tab here is how we're gonna open up that window. Once you have the controls opened up, you can start adjusting the different frequencies. If you watched episode two of our Ask the Editor series where we were talking about audio effects in Premiere, this will look very similar to the parametric equalizer that is in Premiere, and it's gonna work roughly the same. So from here, you'll notice the different points, and as you go from low to high, you're going from bass to high frequencies. So bringing up these lower frequencies will bring in some bass to the audio, giving it a little bit more depth, whereas bringing up the higher frequencies will boost the volume, giving it a little bit more clarity. 
So a question that came up was how to make room in your piece for your dialogue by notching certain frequencies in your music. We can achieve that with this channel EQ effect, but this is definitely where setting your audio rolls and creating compound clips are gonna come in handy because we're gonna need to look at the dialogue and the music side by side. So you're gonna apply the effect to both the source audio and the music. And then we're gonna go ahead and open them up so we can view them side by side. One thing to remember about the different frequencies is the male voice will typically register in the 80 to 160 hertz range, where female voices will typically register in the 165 to 255 hertz range. So depending on who is speaking and how high or how low their voice is will determine the area of the graph that you're gonna wanna focus on. So a lower voice is gonna register in this area where a higher voice will register up in this area. So you're gonna wanna come to a piece of your audio where you have dialogue so that you can watch where these waveforms are registering. And to make sure you can see these waveforms, make sure you have Analyzer turned on here in the bottom left corner. So we'll see this audio here is peaking right in around this area. So that's the area of the graph that we need to focus on for the music. You're gonna take that point on the graph, so about here, and you're gonna bring it back down about negative six decibels because we don't wanna pull it out too much. We're just making a little bit of room in these frequencies so that your dialogue can be boosted above the music more so than just bringing up the volume of both. If you're getting any sort of distortion when you start messing with these points, remember that this bottom number, the Q, will widen or narrow the curve and it can either give you a sharp decrease or a nice smooth decrease in those frequencies. So you're just gonna adjust that if you're receiving any distortion. If the graph is a little intimidating, you can achieve a similar effect with the equalization under the audio enhancements. Again, you're just gonna hit this little control tab. You're gonna open it up to 31 bands. If you come in here to 12 and you start pulling that down, you'll be able to pull out those frequencies. You are gonna to wanna to make sure you adjust the points on either side to get that smooth curve to avoid any sort of distortion. What this process is doing is notching the frequencies around where those voices are at so that the dialogue and the lyrics are not competing with each other. So you're effectively making room for your, for your dialogue in your music track. So the next effect we're gonna look at is called noise gate. This will come in handy if you're working with source audio that could have any sort of low noise to it. So if, the, if you're working outside and there's traffic, if there's a small water fountain, uh, or any sort of low hums or hisses, this will help cut out the frequencies that that noise is appearing in, and so it'll help smooth out your audio a bit more. So you'll just pull it up in the effects browser and then drop it onto the piece of audio you wanna work with. So we're gonna open it up in the audio inspector, open up the controls, and now we can work on it from here. So once you identify what frequency that noise is appearing, you can then go ahead and dial it in from the controls. So for example, if it's registering at the negative 20 dB, you can set that threshold right in that negative 20 range. And then the reduction is gonna be how much you wanna pull that noise out. Just be aware that uh, the frequencies are probably still gonna register in the speaker's voice. So you don't wanna pull it out too much because you're gonna get distortion in your dialogue. And if it's feeling like the effect is coming in too harsh, you can adjust the attack and release in order to tell the effect when to turn on and when to turn off when it registers that noise. Again, this isn't going to repair any major uh, noise or distortion you're getting in your audio, but it will help with any of those really low, kind of annoying room tones you may get. An issue you may come across, especially working in weddings, is when the speaker is not speaking directly into the microphone. So you run into this problem of they'll start out really high, and then as they move away from the microphone or turn their head, their audio gets really low. So what you can do to smooth that out is apply a compressor effect. And a compressor does essentially what it sounds like it does. It compresses the dynamic range that you're working in. So you can bring those low audio points up and make sure that the high audio points don't go too far out of, outside of a preset limit. So again, just come into your effects browser. You can type in compressor and pull it onto the audio source you're looking to work with. Come up here to your audio inspector and open up the controls. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the auto gain is turned off because if you're doing any sort of fine tune adjustments, then it'll just apply that algorithm across and it could mess up any other effects you may be using. So I'm gonna come up here to the threshold and go ahead and just set it to negative three. So that's gonna make sure that the high points of my audio do not go above negative three dB. It's gonna keep it within the range that I wanna keep it in. 
For these other points, we talked a lot about what ratio attack and release are in our previous episode on the Premiere audio effects, so we'll provide a link to that episode in the description below. So for this, we know that the ratio for dialogue is best at a four to one ratio, so we'll go ahead and set that. For this compressor, you're gonna really wanna adjust the attack and release based on your dialogue to, again, make sure that you're not pulling any sort of distortion out. We're gonna go ahead and do a higher attack with a 2.5 millisecond and then a slow release with 150 to give it that half a second release. That way it's a nice smooth in and out for the effect. If you notice that when you set your threshold that some of your audio is now a little bit lower than you would like, you can go ahead and adjust that with this output gain. So you can bring it up if you wanna boost your audio a little bit more. There is a built-in limiter in this effect, so you can go ahead and set that threshold as well. We'll go ahead and set that to a negative six. So again, our peaks are not gonna go any higher than that negative six. If your audio source is plugged into say a DJ board and the DJ accidentally put it up too high and now your audio is completely distorted, this isn't going to solve that problem, but it can certainly help bring it back to a more workable level. If you sit down to work on your project and you find that the sensitivity on your recorder was set a little bit too high and now your audio is registering really hot, you can apply a limiter effect and that'll drop the ceiling of your audio down to a more desirable level. So if we come in here to this audio, you'll notice on the graph right here that we're getting some points that are registering in the yellow and the red. These points here are going to be what's registering a little bit too high and it will cause some distortion. So we can put a limiter effect on it to bring it back down into the range we want to keep our audio in. So we're going to come in here to, again, our effects browser, and we're just going to look for the adaptive limiter and pull that onto our audio. Again, come up here to our audio inspector and pull up the controls by clicking on that little box. Once you open it up here in the top left, you'll see a couple presets and that will definitely help you in a pinch. But if you really wanna fine tune it, you can just come in here and set your own settings. So you're gonna come in here and we're gonna watch our audio and we're gonna see where it's registering on the graph. So you notice it goes up above the zero a couple of times. So we're gonna wanna bring those points back. We're gonna start by setting our output ceiling to zero cause that will bring it back into this more level range. And then we're gonna leave our look ahead as this optimal look ahead of 20 milliseconds. Once you have your settings dialed in, you're gonna to wanna to play back your audio and you're gonna look here at the reduction column. If you notice the input where it's peaking, the reduction column should be compensating for it at a similar number. What the limiter is doing is it's looking for any points in the audio that is going above that desired threshold you've set and pulling it down the amount of decibels it needs just to even it out. And that's why it's adaptive. It's not going to set a firm number for your audio. It's just gonna look at where the points are and see how it can even it out. Again, this isn't going to fix any really blown out audio. It's just gonna find those few areas where maybe it's coming in a little too hot and bring it down to a more desirable level. Okay guys, there's a couple of tips and tricks we think that'll help you clean up your audio in Final Cut 10. Please feel free to keep submitting your questions to our website, or you can always find us on Instagram and we'll keep making these videos for you guys.